and I'm Jonah. Welcome, Welcome to the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript explores the issues of student debt, talks to the ultimate team about their season, and investigates parking challenges at Northampton High. Brian Hefner, the estranged husband of former Massachusetts Senate President Stanley Rosenberg, pled not guilty to several charges on Tuesday morning. Hefner was arraigned in the Suffolk Superior Court on charges of indecent assault and battery, disseminating nude photos of a person without consent, and open and gross lewdness. Rosenberg agreed to step down from his position as Senate President as a Senate Ethics Committee investigates whether he broke any rules or acted inappropriately. It is unlikely that Rosenberg will return to the presidency. On Wednesday, French President Emmanuel Macron called on the U.S. to reject nationalism and isolationism in an address to a joint session of Congress. Macron urged the United States to not back away from the Iran nuclear deal, Syria, the Paris Climate Agreement, and international free trade agreements. The speech comes during an official state visit, in which the French president repeatedly expressed his disagreement with President Trump's hints of pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. On Tuesday, a federal judge rejected President Trump's efforts to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, known as DACA. Judge John Bates is the third federal judge to reject the Trump administration's proposal to end the program. Unless the Department of Homeland Security challenges the ruling within 90 days, the program will be fully reinstated and continue accepting applications. In his ruling, Judge Bates called the administration's reasoning for ending the program arbitrary and capricious. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. Many seniors in our own high school are attending college later this year, and their financial decisions could lead them into taking loans to pay for their education and enter what we call student debt. For the past two decades, student debt has risen each year. The average student in the class of 2016 has around 37000 in student loan debt. To discuss the ways a student debt can be prevented, I spoke to NHS guidance counselor Anna Rigali. It's really important for students to be smart when they're choosing where they're going to go to college. Uh, colleges usually have to report what kind of financial aid they give. So being smart about that decision and doing some research about different colleges and how good their financial aid is, is a really great first step. After that, it's really important to weigh the amount of loans that each college is giving you. I think a lot of students really want to go to their first choice college and don't consider price sometimes. And it's really important to see how much loan each college is giving you and use that as part of your decision-making process. There's other things students can do, like apply for scholarship money, um, limit the amount of loans they want to take. You know, just because a college offers you loans doesn't mean you have to take it. Some students don't realize that. Um, you can take as much or as little loan as you would like. There are indicators that if a student debt continues to increase, it could have a major impact on the economy. Many educational institutions, such as Smith College, can help students prevent this crisis. I spoke to Smith College Student Financial Services Director David Villinger to find out the ways in which the college helps out. We try to keep our debt levels to, for our students at a minimum. So, in other words, the most a first-year student can borrow is up to $5,500. That's the most that they can get through the federal government. It's important for students in high school to be looking at outside scholarships. Is there any scholarship assistance provided by the local community organizations that um, students can apply for? There are a lot of states now that are considering free college for first, the first two years, whether it be a community college or a two-year program. I think that would be a wonderful initiative for society to put its weight behind so that everybody would have a chance to get a college degree. And at that level, it's an associate's degree. Somebody would then have better job training or better skills to go out into the workforce, which can then help society as a whole. Student debt has been a $1 trillion problem for at least six years. And as more students continue their education, it's expected to continue rising. Organizations and institutions will continue helping our students to hopefully find a solution to this crisis. This was Tell It Like It Is, I'm Flor Castillo. Hi, I'm Lulu. 
Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Ultimate Frisbee, a sport that was invented at Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, is very popular for kids here at NHS and in neighboring towns. Both the girls and boys team here at NHS take pride in their sport and have earned impressive rankings throughout the years. To become more familiar with the sport, learn the true meaning of the spirit of the game and how common injuries are, I talked to captains Hayden Felcher and Oscar Fitcher. Yeah, and like a big part of Ultimate is what's called spirit of the game, which basically means like there are no refs, so you do make your own foul calls and you make every call on your own. So, I mean, the, one of the most important things is to like be, be honest and be fair when you're playing. Yeah. Well, Ultimate is technically a non-contact sport, um, but there is a lot of contact in gameplay. I think last year we had like eight concussions. Yeah, so, and we had like two or three season-ending ones, I think. So we do have a lot of injuries uh, that plague our team every year, sadly. In addition to a thriving boys' ultimate program, the high school has had an enormously successful girls' program as well. To learn about how the game is played, the history behind ultimate songs, and how the girls' team maintains a balance of confidence and humility, I talked with senior Claire Babbitt Bryant and junior Rachel Levitt. The way ultimate is played is there are two end zones. It's kind of like a football field, and there's seven people on each team. And the goal is to, to catch the disc in the end zone. And you are not allowed to walk or, or run with the disc in your hand, and you have 10 seconds to throw the disc. The game is played to 15 points usually, and the halftime is at 8, but there is a time cap, so if an hour and a half goes off before... Um, you get to 15, the game's over. So in the past few years, we've ranked top three in the state in the past five or six years. And last year, we were ranked 19th in the nation. At a lot of tournaments, there are going to be teams that are like within the top five of the nation. And so we'll be able to face really high competition. Uh, and I think that'll be really good for us uh, to kind of put us in check, yeah. um, not get our confidence too high, but also realize that we can actually stand a chance against really the best girls in the entire country. At the end of every game, we each sing a song, each team sings a song to the other team, um, and it's really fun, and we write our own songs, and they're usually parodies that involve stuff about Frisbee. It's cool because it really reflects the culture of the sport, how we can have an intense game, but then also remember that um, the end goal is to do something that we all love to do. Girls Ultimate faces off against Northfield Mount Hermon tomorrow. Girls Tennis has a game today at 4 p.m. against Longmeadow. Tomorrow, Girls Lacrosse has a game at home at 11 against Agonquin. Baseball also has a home game tomorrow at 3 p.m. against Longmeadow. And boys track has a game at 9.30 tomorrow against Westside. Boys lacrosse are away at 11 against Tantasqua. And freshman baseball has a game at 3 o'clock in Longmeadow. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Earlier this week, the King of Swaziland, the country's last absolute monarch, has officially changed his country's name to the Kingdom of Iswanti on the 50th anniversary of their independence. Congrats! In other news... Juniors and seniors at NHS with driver's license have the opportunity to purchase parking passes from the senior class. These parking passes permit a student to park in the main school lot, as opposed to using the stadium parking lot, which is much farther away. This year, however, you may have heard some threats that cars parked in the main lot without a proper pass would be towed. How are NHS students handling the situation? Where do you park when you get to school? I park in the stadium parking lot. I drive to school and I park in the lot right there. I drive to school and I also park in the parking lot. Same with me. Have you purchased a parking pass? No. I do not have a parking pass. No. No. How do you feel about the current parking policies at NHS? I think that they're too expensive. I think they're unfair. I don't think that you should have to pay to park at your own school, especially since this is a public school. A lot of people like will either get cars or licenses like partway into the year. Um, and I feel like parking passes are only advertised to be bought at the beginning of the year. I feel like there, there's enough parking spots for everybody that we shouldn't have to pay for them, considering it's not like we're taking somebody who like rightfully bought it, because like they're going to have a space to park no matter what. I think it makes sense, like money-wise, but I think like towing people is a bit intense. Especially yeah. since you're towing students. Like, why would you tow a student's car? Yeah. 
It's a little rough. <laughs> yeah. Although some students have expressed disapproval over the parking fees at NHS, they are relatively low compared to other schools in Western Mass. Longmeadow High School charges $175 and Gateway charges $220. I spoke with Anna Conley, president of the senior class, to learn more about the high school's parking pass policies. Students purchase parking passes within the first couple weeks of school. Um, they're sold by the senior class in front of the office. Um, they're sold for two weeks and the first week is sold to just seniors um, and they're sold for $30 and then afterwards the second week is opened up to everyone and those are sold for 35. Students used to have assigned spots because it was more organized but this year we took it away because it was more difficult for the office when someone would park in the wrong spot and then everybody would shift around and then everybody would go to the office and complain. All of the money from selling parking passes goes to the senior class. I didn't come up with the price. Historically, parking passes have cost $30 for seniors and $35 for everyone else. The administration reserves the right to determine who is allowed to use the space. Principal Lombardi said that he can't say no when asked if the administration would actually tow students who illegally park but we'll use various steps to resolve any conflicts before calling a towing company. I'm Mikey Diaz. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week on The Transcript. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. The Transcript is now accepting applications for the fall semester. If you want to work on this broadcast next year or work on creating the yearbook, pick up an application outside of room G16. Mm -hmm.